<laughs> uh, so this is the zoning advisory committee, which was held in 2018, the fall of 2018. <laughs> um, and I wanted to just give it an introduction, and particularly for the new members, I just jotted down a few little handy hints about zoning advisory committee. Hi, Rhea? I just turned set. Yes. <laughs> And I, I wanted to say that um, the only reason I'm kicking this off is because I happen to be the liaison from the planning board, and the planning board assigns the members of the Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, we are going to be voting on a chairperson later on the agenda, um, so that no way should be construed as I am voting myself as the chairperson. <laughs> so um, first off, perhaps we should just go around and introduce ourselves. We're going to be working together for a while, and um, perhaps, you know, how many years you've been in town, what involvement, if any, in town government, etc. Little things like that. All right? John, go ahead oh, and start. Hi, I'm John Catino. Um, been in Hoppington about 20 years. Um, I believe this is my 12th year on the on Zoning Advisory Committee and also on the uh, Board of Select. Hi, I'm Ted Barker Hook. Um, I've also been in town about 20 years. I am on the Conservation Commission. This is my fourth or I think fourth year on Zach. I'm Mary Larson Marlowe. I've been in town for about 15 years and uh, I have two kids in high school. And I um, joined the Zach last year and served, served one term on that and then was uh, elected to the planning board this spring. I'm Peggy Shaw. I've been in town for 18 years. Um, I have been serving on ZBA for four years and I'm new to Zach, I'm the liaison for ZBA. Uh, Ron Foisey, been in town for 29 years. Um, have served on Parks and Rec Commission, the Youth Commission, currently on the Chamber of Commerce and the liaison for the Chamber. Hi, I'm uh, <coughs> Madhu Chandrasekhar. I've been in Hopkinton for the past six years now. This is my first time in anything involving town government and Zach is my first step into it and I'm here to learn and help as much as I can. Hi, I'm Elise Mihailovsky. I've been in town for a little over a year. And um, <coughs> not directly related to government, but I'm also on the board of EHOP, so mm -hmm. I like to learn a lot fast. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Rhea. Rhea McNamara. I've um, been in town 14 years. Um, uh, the 14 years I've been on design review board for 10 years. On this committee, either five or six, it's, I'm kind of, I'm not sure about which, where that is, but um, enjoy getting out and meeting all the folks in town because my kids are grown and there's no other way to meet people. <laughs> and I'm Carol DeBurr and I've been here for 30 years. <laughs> um, currently serving on the planning board. I've previously served on the planning board and Zach for a number of years. Great. So the second sheet, I handed out, or was, or with the handouts, um, just gives a little overview, partially excerpted from the EHOP website, <laughs> and what the Zoning Advisory Committee is all about. And again, this is primarily for the new members, and, and I would really appreciate if any more experienced town government um, people could chime in and give a little bit more color. Um, so the purpose of the Zoning Advisory Committee is to review and develop proposals for zoning, bylaw, and zoning map amendments, and then make these recommendations to the Planning Board. The Planning Board then goes through a process of reviewing them themselves, and then um, obviously having the legal counsel look at them for the right legal wording, and then having a public hearing for them in one of the meetings, and is that usually in January or February, Elaine? When they, uh, when planning board reviews it with the public, and then okay, and then after any additional changes might be made to the wording or to the entire recommendation, then it goes to the town meeting, and then it's voted on at town meeting. 
So that's for, um, for, for the timing for, for um, amendments. Um, some of the tools that Elaine has already handed out to include the zoning, the book of zoning bylaws, and that's from 2017, right? So that does not yet have the changes made to zoning bylaws at last town meeting, right? I'm not sure which was emailed. We do, did recently receive the 2018. Okay, we have the 2017. The one from the email was the 2017. So, we can um, send out yeah, whenever you can. And then um, she she gave us these zoning maps last year. They're also they also are available like electronically, but they're actually a lot easier to look at on paper because the electronic ones are so tiny. Mary, of course, the, you still need a... The copy that I got says printed October 2018. It does? Okay. Maybe the, the one I have is just older. Okay. Thanks. Good. And um, Town of Hopkinton Master Plan. Um, so anyone who needs a copy of that, we're going to bring copies of probably the next meeting. Um, and then there's um, that that good list of, of definitions and abbreviations you can email that out as well Elaine yeah. right that's great okay um, and let me see if there was anything else no I don't think so I think that was all, most of the tools and any, can you think of any other ones that were useful for people new last year or previous years I think that's a good start because it gets overwhelming oh yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah, and we expect you to read all the zoning bylaws. There'll be a and, and and recite them for us. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that so I like I tried to read the first one, and I was like, okay, I don't think I can remember all this. <laughs> <laughs> when you're suffering from insomnia, um, <laughs> so there's there's and I'm going to need help here. There's general bylaws and there's zoning bylaws. So we we are just dealing with the zoning bylaws. So the, sometimes things will come up, and people will make suggestions and. And um, then someone who's more knowledgeable will say, nope, that's part of the general bylaws, not part of the zoning bylaws. Um, the zoning bylaws only affect new projects or new uses of land. It doesn't get grandfathered at all to existing, even if they're already approved projects, even if they're not built yet, a new zoning bylaw doesn't affect them, okay? So, um, and, and then, the only other big thing is that um, the planning board had decided to reorganize this year in order to um, continue ZAC year round, uh, you know, accepting summer, I mean, you know, <laughs> within reason, <laughs> but to continue year round. And that's really to deal with some of the more complex issues, like, for instance, the Dark Sky Initiative, which, which um, uh, we discussed a little bit last year, but. It, it, there's there's so many moving parts and so many things to consider. It's certainly not something that can be done in two months. <laughs> so, right? Um, any other just basics that <coughs> new people might you know find it helpful to know? How does this board interact with the master plan? So we um, last year did not do more than just use it as a guideline. Um, last year, a lot of times there, there were a lot of good suggestions that we needed to discuss right away and we weren't, we weren't searching for other ideas from the master plan, but. Right, if, if, if I may, you know, um, going back when the uh, Zoning Advisory Committee was started, it was really started, it, we're doing it almost opposite what, um, uh, the way it was enacted was that when things came before the planning board, it was actually when you were on there too, um, and the planning board needed more uh, horsepower behind it, they would throw stuff down to Zach, and things still come back down from, from the planning board that they need research done, and we were basically their research people to, to uh, vet some of the issues. Um, and, 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 and so the guidance, you know, the, 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 just, just as Mary was saying, the, the master plan is just something that, that we use as guidance as long, along with the um, vision statement and, and some of the other guidance that we've gotten from the community and from the, some of the other elected boards. But most of the stuff, it comes down from uh, the planning board or people that come before us 
and then uh, suggest issues that, that may be there. Like, like, one of them, like this first one that we have here, the uh, banner over Main, Main Street. I'll take some of the heat for that one because we've been putting banners over Main Street and, and they've all been about four feet by 45 feet. But um, last year when we changed the sign by law or the year before, we put on a number like, uh, I don't know, two feet by 25 feet. That seemed big enough but it wasn't the reality. And so it wasn't the reality of what we've always been putting up. And so that's something we sort of might as well look at. And it's things like that, that, that um, when bylaws go into effect and there may be uh, ramifications from them to, to look back over and, and, and tweak stuff and try and fix things. What is the process for members of the public to come forward with requests? How does that happen? That generally happens uh, at our second meeting where um, members of the public come up, and as Mary was saying, some people come up with issues that, that really are general bylaws. And um, this, this committee really can't, can't uh, deal with general bylaws. Um, but if it's something that, that looks like um, it can be handled, like we had um, uh, two or three years ago, we had uh, doggy daycare where the, uh, ins the um, head of inspections in the town came forward and said that there was a loophole that um, at that point anybody could open up a doggy daycare in their house and just call it a family business or, or a, a home-based business. And there were, there were no guidelines to that. So we put in some, we called in some experts and put in some guidelines so if somebody were to open up a family or, or a home-based home business, that there would be some guidelines for if they decide to have a doggy daycare. Can I just <clears throat> add a little something to that in, in the fact that now this has become a year-round board, that perhaps we can have public input on a more oh, consistent yeah. basis? In the past, it's, it's been a quick hit to try and get things put together Crunch for time. town meeting. So we've had one meeting to hear input and then we kind of decided from that list of you know 25 <laughs> things which ones we wanted to tackle first and it was a time thing um, I think going forward we have the opportunity to have more consistent input from townspeople and not necessarily all at one time and it can it becomes an ongoing process rather than a crunch to get done and you know oh we can't do this in the amount of time we have we probably will still have to see which ones we can, which ones are important, which ones we can get done for this town meeting, this coming um, town meeting. But uh, and, you know, and what, and then again, what the planning board wants, and that's good. We have two two members of the planning board now, because we can get some input of what what's uh, important to the planning board. Um, that's uh, that's that's always an important thing. Yeah, thank you. And also the um, planning board had hoped that um, that instead of discussing everything we wanted to discuss and then throwing it all to them, that we discuss one or two uh, items and at that point throw those items to them and then continue with discussing our next two items, that sort of thing. So on a rolling basis, potentially all year long. But we will still be running with that um, town meeting deadline of, you know, we have to, anything we want in town meeting for 2019 would have to be done and to the planning board by the end of December, early January. Yeah. Yes. So, right around that. So, mm -hmm. If something got rejected in last year's town meeting, does it come back on the table for this year or is it out? <laughs> There's no automatic anything, but, um, but in general, I would think we wouldn't consider it because if the town rejected it, unless we were considering big rewrites. You know, no, I, to, I, I'm just, no, just, no, I'm just understanding. You know, I'm just speculating, but yeah, um, it doesn't necessarily come back. Is, the, right is there a three year waiting period before you can bring something back up to town meeting? I thought it was two years. It's two years. It's two? I it's two years, yeah. Unless it's substantially different mm -hmm. and the planning board votes to recommend it. We did look at the nuisance bylaw two years in a row. I don't know if that's because we didn't propose it at town meeting or what, but we, it came up two years in a row. I think one was well, a, one was general. It didn't go to town meeting though. No, I'm saying I don't, yeah. maybe well, that's, that's, that's why we did it. That's two what I thought. What the question right. was was that you know right. can you bring it back to town meeting the next next year? I don't think you can. 
You well, have if the to... planning board recommends it, you can. Sure. But I mean, we've done lighting and signage every year. <laughs> my favorite it, stuff. Right? Oh my God. Let's put it at the top of our list for this year. <laughs> Actually, I can't, can't blame John for that. Thank you. Uh, say I was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I but I was. But I was. Uh, I was just um, collecting a list, um, partially <laughs> that that Elaine had collected, and partially um, from other planning board suggestions that I'd heard from people. Um, so, and this is just our starting point for discussion. So, and it's clearly not all tonight. <laughs> like on the board of selectmen, the three the the, the three um, uh, third rails, uh, trails, trash, and um, trees. Those are the three that tend to get the audience filled. Mm -hmm. So we try and stay away from them, but they keep <laughs> coming back. <laughs> okay, so just. I think that's uh, that's it for the introduction in terms of what what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, but this this list of um, agenda items that we can start discussing tonight after we've elected a chair and a vice chair. Um, this is just a starting point, and I'm sure everyone here can think of additional things. And I think that's. The best part of having this new um, membership format year round is that is that we can brainstorm about other things where past years we simply haven't had time to mm -hmm. get to anything else other than the ones right on our plate. Mary, do you want to discuss our schedule for meeting? Because again, this is a whole different format. I. The last few years we were meeting like every week, like a couple times a week because we were trying to get stuff done. And I, I, you know, I just was curious to know, was that settled in terms of how often we're meeting? No, it was uh, left, left up to this committee to decide how to schedule in a reasonable way. It seems like every other week makes the most sense. Um, okay. But days of the week and, and that sort of thing, it's up to us. You know, last year we had a tough time making quorums. Of, yeah. Well, a, a I was sick time. for a lot of it. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was a hard thing. And plus it was 21 people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have nine members this year, right? Need five. Everybody's a voting member. Mm -hmm. But we and we also just just so you know, since we didn't get in enough you know additional volunteers, we, we are certainly open on the planning board to um, to assigning associate members as they come up during the year. If anybody does volunteer, feel free to recruit people. Um, it's I think it'll be a good place for people to learn more about town government and even you know even if they can't be a member, if they can attend a few meetings, then they can learn more. Watch us on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what uh, our next on the agenda then? Um, did you want to did you want to set the date and meeting schedule prior to electing a chair and vice chair? Do you think that that? Makes I think sense? The, the, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to know that if it's on the <clears throat> agenda, I mean we can pick it up anytime. Yeah. So so what day of the week? works best for people um, and what, what days of the week do the other to meet committees meet so what's taken up board of selectmen meet on Tuesday. Tuesdays every Tuesday or every the, every other every other are you meeting this week no that's it's, it's what second and fourth I think is it second second and fourth. moving around for holidays and yeah moving around for holidays but same thing we're, then that's what that's the other thing we're going to run into here too yeah. is that um there are a lot of holidays coming up oh yeah it is the season but that's why we have it all year round that's mm -hmm. the perfect thing mm -hmm. uh concom also meets on tuesdays it sounds like the same nights that board selection does and yes. wednesdays would be bad for me okay what about first and third Mondays? Yeah, I think I, yeah. I think it's first and third Mondays would be you know opposite from the planning board, so mm -hmm. that works for me. That works for me. Right. That works best for me. Mondays. Does it not work for anybody? Okay. Yeah. First and third it. Mondays. First Way third to go! Mondays. Wow, that's <laughs> much easier. <laughs> so that means I can never. And we're talking seven p.m. Right. Yeah. No Monday night football. 
7 p.m. Actually, we should okay. be able to get back. And we could usually end by 9 then? Well, one, one rule that, that was passed down from chair to chair on this, and I, <laughs> I try keeping it up for the last several months that I've been chair, um, is that we start at 7 and out by 9 just to be fair to everybody, because there's always so much that you can continue to discuss, but to be fair and, and just, uh, you know, two hours uh, every two weeks should be enough to yep. get stuff done. And then I think we, we can, get punchy can, after nine o'clock. Yeah. their lives. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have any nominations for chairperson? I nominate John Catino for chair. And I was gonna nominate Mary for chair. John, do you accept the nomination? <coughs> sure. <coughs> and I accept the nomination. Um, I'm sorry, does there need to be a second of each one of us? Yes. Okay. Anybody want a second? John's. <laughs> I'll second John's. Okay. <laughs> Anybody second? Second. Okay. And any other nominations? I was going to nominate Carol, but she beat me to the punch. Uh, <laughs> do I get to make a little speech? Oh, gosh. In support of Mary being chair, um, I guess the primary reason in, in my mind is of appointing Mary is a lot of the setup was Mary's doing in terms of how to structure Zach. Um, Zach is also a sub board of the planning board and typically has always been chaired by a planning board member. Um, and I think Mary is very conscientious and would do a great job. I know John's been chair for eons and eons. And uh... now I'm torn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shall we take a vote? How do, how do we do it when it's not just in yay or nay? One and then all those in favor of the other. And okay. If there's a majority. Can you, can you call the, since it's, you know, it's weird for me. To <laughs> since uh, John was nominated first, then uh, all those in favor of John, please indicate. And those in favor of Mary? Mary has. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now, we'll take uh, nominations for vice chair. I'd like to nominate John as vice chair. <laughs> I'd like to second that. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other nominations for vice chair? Yeah. <laughs> Do you accept that sure. nomination? <laughs> All in favor of John as vice chair? Thank you. That, that's actually a, a, a better spot because uh, um, uh, I, I did want to step back after, after a dozen years. And so, yeah, so really, it, it's, it's a... It, it, it's a heavy lift um, to uh, keep it organized, especially <laughs> after last year with the, 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 the dozens of people, um, to keep it organized and, and, and keep the things moving and to be able to know um, the difference between when we're starting to getting into uh, general bylaws and stuff and to stay away from those, uh, from those, those pits that you can get into. But it'll be great, so yes, I, I'd much rather be in an advisory position this year than uh, Thank you. Well, you're going to be giving a lot of advice. <laughs> Thank you, John. So uh, we have to officially approve the minutes from the last meeting of Zach, which was on December 6, 2017. <laughs> Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? No. Oh, I see. I'd just like to add that the person need not to have been present in order to vote to approve them. Them. Okay. them. Okay, so the people, people who, who were present at the December 6th meeting, was I present? Because I don't think I was. Yeah, it says I was there. Okay, yep. <laughs> okay, so who was present? You and Joe. You were present. I was so definitely so present. Rhea, were you present? I was no. not. Just three of you. It was just the three of us. No, but no, any, but so everybody can vote to vote. Everybody can vote, Everybody can vote on, 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 yes. So I'll, make, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for December 6th, 2017. Second. I second. Okay. And uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> Do you want to switch seats? <laughs> Slide some notes. Okay. Approved. <laughs> All right. Before we go into the list of, of first and third members. Okay, good, good. Okay. Let us look at that list and start jotting things down that might be additions to the list. So, um, banners over Main Street. This is just a, just a maximum size issue um, from the Board of Selectmen. Yep, nothing else that popped out at you for that. And um, Elaine, next time, um, when, when we put this in a table and so on, will you be able to put the bylaw um, number the reference. next to each one? Yeah, for the reference. We will do that. That would be great. That's a great idea. The dark sky community um, has to do with how much lighting is in town, you know, and, and what hours of operation the lighting can be on and, um, and things like that. So that, it was, it was, I imagine it's been discussed around town for, for a long time. Um, but I know it was discussed last year at the ZAC. Um, any, anyone else want to give a little color behind that um, discussion? <coughs> Do we have rules? There's a lot of, well, it's the, uh, what is it, the International Engineers Society that sets up the standard, the lighting standard for certain kinds of businesses mm -hmm. and um, in this town apparently the Liberty Mutual building was built with um, night sky guidelines because it happens to be completely surrounded by a residential area and there are some people that believe that all the commercials should be at that same lighting level. Right, John? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm still. <laughs> and some, I'm, I'm and still some, trying, I'm writing down. You're, 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 well, you're, you're one of the I'm, people that, would, like, we, we, we listened to the arguments on this stuff, and it was one of those things where some people feel like it's that level of lighting for all commercials should be at that level. Um, and then other people feel that, you know, maybe closer to 495, you don't have that same lighting level. You know, it's more of a um, what's appropriate for the business and a business zone and a rural business zone and a, and a residential zone, all of those things. Um, and it comes to whenever there's a, um, a discussion at Design Review Board over lighting a project. Um, you know, a lot of the commercial buildings want to be lit up like a Christmas tree. And the only thing we can say is, well, we're a night sky community. Well, what does that mean? What are the guidelines for that? So we need to give better guidelines. So we, we need, need to establish those guidelines, what that means, because, again, um, the difficulty we had, I, I can think of the Dunkin' Donuts, which was the one that I reviewed with Design Review Board was that um, it's, a, it's in a transitional zone. Rural business is a transitional zone. So um, you had residences right up next to mm -hmm. the Dunkin' Donuts and they were gonna be directly affected by the lighting and the signage and the egress of that particular project. It became a big deal. And then, and then, so what, where, where this also affected us was I remember when they were, um, actually, I was on the planning board when they were doing the expansion for Golden Pond, mm -hmm. and we were, and and we were putting um, limits on the lighting. And then I remember when I was th then five years later, ten years later, I, w I was working there, and the and the lighting wasn't bright enough in the parking lot. You couldn't for, see what you were doing. You couldn't see what you were doing. But I understand when you know. But what but what ends up happening with the night sky stuff is. We can use all of these directed uh, these lights that are directed down without the um, uh, down with, what, what they call it the, well no not the uplighting the, the, no the, when they, they they make the uh, the shade so the lighting all, all it's all totally directed down with LEDs or whatever but the problem is when it rains out or the snow we've got the reflection mm -hmm. um, so no matter no matter what we do at times you know, Mother Nature can can work against us. 
Uh, also, a lot of the projects that we review, I think that the engineers are lazy and they don't come up with creative uh, lighting solutions. And if we came up with some suggestions on how lighting should look, <laughs> it might be a better way of approaching it. Because, like I said, what I see the lighting plan, which is just the stamp of, you know, the, a computer is not really yeah. done thoughtfully, and I see landscaping done the same way. It's very um, boring, you know, not necessarily good for the business, you know, our community. Yeah, I have a computer program that will lay it out absolutely perfectly, right. and it'll give you it'll give you completely uh, homogeneous lighting everywhere, but it looks like it was laid out on a grid. Yeah, right. Yeah. Have Have we looked at other communities' bylaws with regards to this? We did research that. Mm -hmm. We did a little. Several previous less. iterations, but those are always changing too, so it's always good to look at them again. Mm -hmm. That might be a good starting point for us to look at a couple of those and see what other communities have done. But this, this, doesn't it, this one has to be one of our next year ones, right? Because we oh, yeah. This. It's we a long-term one, I think. Long -term. Yeah, this is our long-term one. Okay, good. We can maybe take care of your signs this year. Thank you. No, <laughs> just no, because what just happened was this. Uh, what's coming up? Isn't there something coming up this next month? Uh, For the banners. The banners. The holiday stroll. Yeah, the holiday stroll. This is when it came up, because we passed this bylaw and everything, but every. Uh, every April, we put up the same banner for the for the race, and every September, we put up the same banner for Family Day, uh, at least the last two years. And we never measured them, just put them up. But then when uh, the holiday stroll came up, they looked and said, oh, our banner doesn't meet the, meet the guidelines. And we said, oops, <laughs> we better fix it. So they, they could have gone to ZBA and met with ZBA and all that, but then it wouldn't have gotten done in time for the holiday stroll. So they're just going to shrink this down. So if you people can't read the banner, um, it's because they went by our recommendations, <laughs> and that's why you know sometimes we have to step back and when we look do some of our recommendations. But again, you know we we try and squeeze in, you know ten or twelve things to get into the planning board in time and get them to get them to uh, uh, the uh, town meeting. But so yes. Well, we learned. <laughs> okay, so the num number three on this list is hours of a business operation and defining those by district. Um, I, I believe that, um, well, planning board certainly puts a lot of conditions into new, new um, uh, agreements for, for developments along these lines. Um, but there's also, it, this is sprinkled within the zoning bylaws, is it not? No, hours of operation are controlled by the Board of Selectmen. Really? Then why is it on this list? But if you want to do it by zone, then you can do stuff, you can get, get into the generalizations by, by zone. Oh, okay. So just some clarification. Yeah. I think the Board of Selectmen can only set hours of operation if they're issuing a license. Mm -hmm. But for oh, businesses okay. without those licenses, there, there may be no restrictions. So there can be 24-hour businesses. Okay. So... Up until now, it's been done piecemeal, you know, in, in, by the Board of Selectmen for license issue and by the Planning Board for those developments that, that you know, come, come before us um, and, and can be driven by conditions that we write into an agreement. And that's about it, right? So this, uh, so this proposal would be to make it more um, uniform and and easier to control. I think what brought that, well, correct me if I'm wrong, I think what brought that up is um, the Dunkin' Donuts, the new gas station Dunkin' Donuts wanted 24 hours. And because this guy has it and that guy has it, we kind of felt that it was, it was unfair to put a restriction on them that other businesses did not have, but that it's not necessarily something that we want to adopt as a town Overall, you know, we don't necessarily want the convenience store here to be 24 hours a day. And the one downtown is <clears throat> required to close by 10, I believe. It could be. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> that's what their requirement is. They can't stay open later than that. So it was more to look at, at the town from an overall perspective to try and 
create some equality between businesses. If I may, through the chair, one of the strange things is, though, that um, uh, things shake out themselves because we ha all the restaurants and, and um, bars are allowed to stay open until 1 o'clock in the morning. And I dare anybody to find, find anything open past 9, 30, 10 o'clock in town. So the market does drive some of this stuff even, you know, even beyond what we, what we allow people to do. I, did, I just searched. I had a feeling this seemed familiar, so I looked up. And so in 2014, the ZAC voted a retail hours of operation by law that it voted. I mean, it didn't go forward. It wasn't voted at town meeting, but it's interesting. So these hmm. have come up before. Did it lose a town meeting, or was it, did it I don't make the war? I don't remember if it went to town meeting or not. I don't think it made it to town meeting. Hmm. But it was a general bylaw. Hence the selectmen. Certainly worthy of discussion. It could be in zoning as well. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Number four is mobile vendors, and this was recommended by building inspectors. Uh, Elaine, do you have any ideas? So um, they've um, so zoning enforcement officers, building inspectors have been dealing with uh, mobile vendors, uh, mostly food trucks, but also other people who want to provide commercial services in various parts of the town. And so they're thinking that um, some form of regulation, whether that's a licensing requirement in the general bylaw or it's something in the zoning bylaw, they'd like Zach to, to, discuss, to discuss that. Uh, for example, um, a business, a mobile business may want to set up in a, um, a park or um, by the side of the road uh, in, a, in a commercial area or a residential area and so they get lots of calls about that and kinds of new kinds of businesses that maybe we never anticipated so they'd like um, they'd like the committee to review that they have provided some examples of bylaws in other communities as well for food trucks what are the other kinds of businesses besides food trucks well, we recently were contacted by a mobile business that will come and remove head lice. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> yes, I have to that they want to set up a So that was a new one. <laughs> okay. Pet well, pet too, yeah, mobile. I see them all the time. In the same category, right? The Catmobile. Catmobile, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's one of those. <laughs> if that's going to... That would be going to a particular residence, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, but like, for example, I live downtown, mm -hmm. so they wouldn't be able to park in my driveway. They would have to park in front of the street, like on the street, if they came to my home there. Okay. I guess unless I moved my car, but... You know, not everybody has a big driveway, so sometimes mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't mm -hmm. actually consider that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a new one. Oh, good. I'm glad we have some examples of it, though, in other places mm -hmm. because we definitely need some help on that one. So we should look at other communities on that one, too. So that sounds like a more long term one, so probably not for 2019 town meeting. Everyone agree? I don't know. I might be able to get it done. Well, no, it depends on what, if I make through the chair, sorry. Uh, if we um, uh, have some good input from other communities and the, and, and the building inspector can come in and, and help us a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, that could be a lot like the, um, the dog one where they <coughs> came in. And we had some experts come in and we can have some people come in and talk to us to make sure, because we don't want to be too restrictive on, on businesses that, are, that might already be here and stuff. Okay, good. All right, the next one is stone walls. And this is from the planning board. Um, there's been, obviously, everyone is, is, uh, is cognizant of the, the beauty of our, our natural stone walls that have come from, you know, from, from uh, perhaps hundreds of years ago, <laughs> but no one quite knows. Um, and so um, people come before the planning board quite often to, um, to get approval to rebuild perhaps a stone wall in front of their, their house or the building lot um, that has fallen into disrepair. Um, but of course the outcome is 
uh, variable <laughs> in terms of the, whether or not it still looks like an old stone wall afterwards. And then, of course, you know, it's, it's uh, defined by different people's you know, aesthetic of uh, what it should look like. So, um, so we've had um, just some discussions about this at planning board that perhaps we should just be a little bit uh, more precise about some of the guidelines that we give people um, instead of just some verbal, um, uh, some verbal uh, guidelines that we give at the planning board itself at the meeting. Are, are these stone walls that are on town-owned land, are on scenic roads, or just on private property? What, no, not what, the, the ones along roads, so. But whose who's property scenic are they on? Roads. Scenic roads, I can understand, if I, sorry, I can't do the chair. I can understand scenic roads, but, um, you know, some people might not be able to afford to, on, you know, if they're on, I don't know, South Street or Elm Street or just some, just random roads that, you know, to build a, to rebuild a stone wall to the you know ancient specifications or something or, or antique specifications may get maybe Peter might be onerous, but I can you know if it, I can stand on scenic roads to give people guidelines, but I think we have to be careful about about uh, property rights. Mm -hmm. Just just to clarify a little further through through the chair, <laughs> um, it came up because on the scenic roads, as you know, John. You need a permit to to take apart and rebuild or or make <coughs> for um, driveway openings, and there seems to be um, a disconnect between what a stonemason thinks is a scenic farmer's wall versus what used to be there, and you go through the language and and this group of people is saying this is we want you to put it back the way it came, the way it was. We want you to recreate the scenic roof look on the scenic road because that's why we have scenic roads is because there's a certain aesthetic associated with it. And that's the only place that the planning board has okay. the right to regulate what you do for mm -hmm. your stone wall. If you want to build a stone wall on your property, go for it. But if it's on a scenic road, then it falls under the planning board's jurisdiction. And, and we're, I think, just looking for a little more clarity in terms of how to define what a scenic road wall looks like and how to relay that to the pr proponent coming before us saying we just want to build a new stone wall like the old one. Mm -hmm. And if you go down uh, Spring Street, there are a couple of stone walls that are supposed to have been built in the character of Spring Street, which are, in my opinion, not anywhere close to the character of Spring Street and what came down. Yeah, they're they're lovely yeah. walls. They are lovely, yeah. but, but they're, they're not. They built a state standard, standard, state standard one, one face with a mortar top. Yep. Yeah, yeah I know what you're saying. Yep. That's what happened yeah. off of Leonard Street as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was at yeah. the meeting when the developer said we want to keep the stone walls. And what's there now is nothing to do with what was there before right. the development. Right. And that's all I think that, that we were trying to accomplish or where this came from is we were trying to come up with a, a standard that could be described to a proponent coming in so that we got what we were hoping to get. If I may do the chair, what we might have to be careful of is, and I'll, I'll look because I, I'll, I'll look in my, in my um, uh, building manuals. I wonder if, we, if, they, if you do touch a stone wall, whether it has to be built to state standard or not for, for liability purposes. I better look. Oh, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I just want uh, just to make, just to make sure. But uh, but I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, about uh, the uh, scenic roads and, and and building them like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, what, you know, if people get inspected, that's something we should. Well, let's ask building inspections. That way, I won't have to look it up. Got it. Okay. And that could be something we can accomplish this year. Mm -hmm. so it does not seem like it would uh, require a huge amount of research, although I'm sure there's going to be a lot of different opinions on it. <laughs> but again, that's why it's great to have a very diverse group here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got different, different, uh, different, different views, different parts of the town, and everything else. 
Well, even if you, back to stone walls, but even if you drive around town on the different scenic roads, the construction of stone walls on Spring Street is totally different than the construction of stone, stone walls on Fruit Street or Saddle Hill. It's a different, Spring Street has, has very nice, defined, wide walls. And Chamberlain Street, which is scenic, has, you know, piles of rocks on the side of the road where people just put them when they were plowing their fields. Mm -hmm. It's not, not anywhere near the same construction, but to put a stone wall from this street on Chamberlain Street would not be in keeping with the scenic road of Chamberlain Street. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're looking at or what we want for a standard varies depending on where you are. So I think we just need language that that makes your new wall consistent with. I think you give, you're giving us a pretty good definition right now. The way you just the way you just said gives us a pretty good definition, keeping with this with the standard of the neighborhood to some extent because you know the uh, probably the the farmers that that were living uh, off of Spring Street had had more more money or more, or more help more in order to make more the rocks. <laughs> more, more rocks. Yeah. I don't think any stone wall is exactly the same design. No, your kid really couldn't be know. back then, right? But but you're right. If they if they were taking down a an old stone wall that was historical and its nature and design, putting up a modern stone wall that didn't have any of that character. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy to quote new stone walls because you figure out the, the size of the stone, the amount of mortar you need, and how high it is. Two front face, both sides faced, and top, you know. But to figure out, a, you know, it's a stone wall where you're just stacking rocks, and some are big, some might stay there, some might not. It's a little bit harder to figure in the cost. Mm -hmm. is, and it's, it's harder to find someone to do that type of work too. Speaking yeah. as somebody who used to live on Food Street and had an old wall. Um, we had to talk to different people before they would actually, we found somebody who would agree to do it. And most people just want to, you know, square rock, as you know, square rocks as possible and just mm -hmm. concrete them together and be done because it's a lot faster, but it takes longer to, to do it, you know, yeah. to farm stonewall standard. Right. Dry stacking around stones, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> And the snow plows redesigned my stone oh, wall yeah. every winter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's Absolutely. a different discussion. <laughs> Very true. Okay, um, next one is definition of a sidewalk. This didn't come from any board specifically, but I believe one of the board members and planning board um, suggested this. And um, unless, unless um, I, I, I would really like that person to come in and discuss this with us because I really have no there's, clear idea what they're looking for. There's got to be state standards and stuff for yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, there's, there's um, ADA yeah, requirements, right. but, but you could have an asphalt sidewalk, you could have a cement sidewalk, you could have a sidewalk that has granite on the side of it, or I mean, it depends on you know how much money you want to spend on your sidewalk. There was years uh, ago there was a question about granite curbing, and I think the DPW did not care for that because it was very tough on their blades. Is my recollection that they if they but don't they last longer because everything else falls apart within two day, two years. So if I'm just saying that I think if, we, if we're going to do that after you get the person in, whoever it was that wants to talk about sidewalks, that we also need to hear from DPW to kind of get their input on. They prefer the Cape Cod berms, and it's easier for the town to, to put them in. It's less expensive, except near the catch basins where, the, where they use the granite. Mm. And the Cape Cod berms are those rounded ones that... No, no, they're, they're actually the more of the, the little slope. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to mention that the, uh, the planning board in its subdivision regulations establishes um, standards for new sidewalks that are built on new streets. So the planning board can change that standard after a public <coughs> hearing and vote. I'm not sure that this rises to the bylaw level. So perhaps when the person comes in to explain, um, it may be something that the planning board can address sooner than going to town meeting. It may not need to go to town meeting. Uh, would this have anything to do with things that are placed in the sidewalk? Like, for example, there's a number of streets where the power lines 
completely block on the sidewalk. So like when I walk my son, I literally have to walk in the street because you can't get a stroller. Would that have anything to do with this? Or would that be a separate issue? It's very common, and I think that affects the ADA compliance. If you have a nice wide sidewalk that is accessible and a utility pole is plunked down in the middle of it, that's, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's what we have downtown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which came first, though? Yeah. Is it is it an issue with the, the, the power the power company? Uh, the telephone was there company? first. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. For sure. No, you don't you don't build put poles in the middle of sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> We're used to them. <laughs> like you know, I am. Um, I think this is a money issue, though. For for like, if you're talking about a development, um, the developer is going to want to go with more of a gradual berm, you know, an asphalty type of thing, which doesn't it doesn't last. You may not have to ever go back and fix it again. And it's the granite and curbing is the Cadillac version, and it's what's lasts the longest and makes the neighborhoods look the best. It's just you know. It's the Wellesley look. <laughs> okay. It costs a lot more. Uh, number seven, paper streets clarify definition. I don't know how they're defined right now, but this was just a suggestion, again, from, from a member of one of the wards rather than from the board itself. Um, so, I'll ask for a, an explanation to to see what uh, what they believe needs to be more clearly defined. Are are paper streets defined anywhere? Only in court cases, the law, but not in but our not in our not bylaws. Zoning no. anywhere or anything? No. Okay. The um, the planning board. Um, as you know, uh, has ways to approve the construction of paper streets through a public hearing process. Um, but that process is not codified in the subdivision regulation, so that's something the planning board could do also. But there again, I don't know what the person was trying to get to. Okay. Does that have anything to do with uh, accepting roads? For the town? That's a separate process? That's a separate process, yeah. It's a town meeting vote. The paper streets, just for, for the benefit of new people, those are streets that show on the town map, right? And but they aren't actual historical. built roads. Right, so historical old roads that show up on old maps that people have the right to build today. Like we're not creating new paper streets. No. Because I think what it, it, it was like frontage and setbacks and all that stuff came into play when you have that. So it's just old streets. Yes. Like that infamous high street. <laughs> right? Okay. Number eight on our list here is around the signage, which we might be able to put in with the banner. <laughs> signage again, I love uh, that. So. <laughs> Signs, signs. signs that don't overhang the pedestrian right of way or the town right of way, pedestrian right of way on their property or the town right of way. Again, not sure what they were getting at other than. We'll have to get a design review person in here to talk about <laughs> Well, that. I know what there is. <laughs> I figured you might. What's that? I said I figured you might know what that yeah, was. Yeah, it's a sign for. Um, the uh, new restaurant, uh -huh. the um, freestanding sign. Um, there wasn't many places to put it, and apparently they were going to put it so that you could walk right into it. Oh, uh, the bottom of it. So, like over a walk walkway? Yeah. I wouldn't have a problem, but if you were over six five, you might. No. <laughs> But I think that's where that came from. I don't know who oh, okay. put it on the list, but okay. We don't have too many freestanding signs, and yeah. Down. But I mean, going forward, I guess because there was a patio that was already built, and there wasn't much landscaping area, and it was just you know very difficult to put the sign anywhere. Makes sense, yeah. But okay.
Um, one other idea I had, and this is a longer term thing, is to, um, if, last year at, at, at ZAC, we discussed a lot of different bylaws that um, were closely related to one another, like accessory dwelling, um, um, accessory family dwelling, and then there was a, yes. oh, there's a <laughs> duplexes, and anyhow, they're all really closely related. And I thought, and I don't know if this is a pipe dream, but I thought it would make sense to review the wording of all those bylaws and consolidate them in some more logical way. But it, it, may, it may be one of those great dreams to be efficient about how things are written that will never get through town meeting. But um, that's, that's one of my ideas. <laughs> Didn't those come up at town meeting? That, those were some changes for specific bylaws. I'm talking about like changing, I mean, making it so there aren't three separate bylaws saying basically the same thing. So. But yes. There were some suggested changes to um, accessory family dwellings last year. One, yes. one, one passed and one didn't. Yeah. Neither, neither passed. Neither passed? Yeah, neither passed. Okay. It was like the conversion bylaw and the accessory family dwelling, and neither. Oh, what the accessory passed, fa no. family dwelling passed? No. It was close. It, it was to, um, as I recall, it came from ZDA last year, and that was yes. to, um, to make it so that there weren't quite as many of those coming before the zoning right. board of appeals. So, um, Does ZBA have any other suggestions this year? Actually, that was a, um, one that Mark Hyman brought up was the accessory dwelling to revisit it, but it sounds like we can't go to town meeting because it already went. Is that how? If the planning board recommends it, you can. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. So that was one. And um, I'm still waiting to hear some more feedback from other members. Okay, good. Um, a banner issue, but that's already on the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and anything come out of any of your committee meetings? Anyone else? I chamber? don't have anything from the chamber. One that I was thinking about personally was uh, considering some standards for screening for solar farms. That would be a longer term discussion. Great. If I may, through the chair, one of the problems with that is we put in as many restrictions as we could what, four years ago, five years ago. You, you were here. You were I was here. We spent a lot of time. Um, because what, what see, the state, uh, the, it, it's the, basically the state gives a green light. And we have to be very careful the restrictions we put on so that the attorney general doesn't throw out everything. Right. So we, we went right to the edge with a lot of that, a lot of the stuff to- And that's now protect, part of this protect zoning? Protect the butters and everything else. Um, but with, but staying, am I speaking correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, with, and, and, and staying within um, the state's uh, push to put as much solar in as possible. To, to Ron's point, though, we could probably we could revisit the the screening section of that bylaw without causing us any problem. Mm -hmm. well, it's good to talk about it and see what's changed. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the state minimums are that we have to allow, or if. But it just it seems like there's a lot of discussion around the solar farms that are going in and and the effect that it has on the neighbors and trying to do what we can to mitigate those as much as possible, I think would be helpful. We did spend some time last year looking at solar farms and I, I brought it uh, to the committee and I was hoping we could increase buffers and it seemed like a dead end. Um, but I would love, certainly on the Conservation Commission, we've been, we've had solar farms placed in front of us a number of times and it, it's frustrating. Um, I, I'd be very happy to look at it again and see if there's another way we could find a way to make it more palatable. What was the outcome of putting solar arrays only in commercial areas? I think that goes back to John's point about the state. 
That was the part that wouldn't go anywhere with the state. Right, because you can't restrict it's property rights when it comes right down to it. Well, you can. Well, my, we do. But my recollection, and Elaine can correct me if I'm wrong, was that you you have to basically allow it wherever it wants to be. We set up lot sizes. It can't be on a parcel less than this and right, setbacks and stuff like that. But I didn't think we were allowed to restrict it by zoning district. I think you could if you were a community with a lot of land in that district and it was available, but in Hopkinton, the majority of uh, non-residentially zoned land is built out. So it wouldn't be a practical thing, and so then that would cause a oh, problem. that's why, because you're by, by virtue of it not being available, right. you're mm -hmm. not allowing it. Uh. We tried that for the whole bunch of different stuff. Well, <laughs> it's adult entertainment and <laughs> recreational marijuana <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, anything else from the Comic Con? No. Okay. Anyone else have ideas of things we should consider looking at? Screening of trash cans. <laughs> God, people don't take their trash cans off the street. It just sort of sit there. Oh. <laughs> Is that homeowners association? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just just decide it looks pretty at the end of the street. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But I, I told you the the three thir the, the uh, third rails, trees, trash, and what's the other one? Trees, trails. trash, and trails. 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 <laughs> Do we know when we're going to um, advertise for our public input, or how soon that can be? Let's take a look at the calendar because we don't want to run into the holidays. Um, so two weeks from now is the 19th, which is Thanksgiving week. So I suggest we do not hold a public hearing that night. Is that? That's a planning board That's meeting planning board. also. You're right. And I'm not here. The 12th, 19th is planning board, so we couldn't hold it then anyhow. We can hold a meeting on the 26th. But again, that's the right after Thanksgiving. Do you think that that's you know, three weeks time? Perfect. Is fine to hold, you know, to, to give public notice? No, we need to. No? We yeah, I know, to. but I mean, to be generous, <laughs> considering it's a holiday, around a holiday weekend. I think it is. There's not a lot that's of preparation, okay. I don't think, in bringing an idea up. Okay. Sorry, what week was that? November 26th. November 26th. So that would be the Monday after Thanksgiving. So we're not going to meet on the 19th? No. The planning board evidently is meeting then. Yeah, so. It's Monday's Veterans Day. So, so when we said first and third, yeah, that's like except, the second except, except, except for that one. Except, except for that. For veterans. Which means we, we should look at all of December and just make sure that we've got. Zach is going to be 17. So. Six. So we're moving the 19th to the 26th? Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what I'm hearing too. And the planning board is December 3rd and 17th. Of December? Of December. 3rd and 17th. So the so December, December 10th. 10th. So, so, yeah. so we can meet the 10th. Good. Right. And the 24th. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able not, to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that. The 31st is going to work either. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well I'm going to. Come on, where's the commitment, people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a cultural <laughs> art so we can help we can get together. Uh, okay. So the 10th of December. So the 3rd is off. I already added all these other ones. The 3rd is <laughs> so, so we're going to meet the 3rd and the 10th? Yeah, the 10th? We can, we can. No, we're not, not meeting the, the, not third. the third. The planning board meets on the third. But we can meet the 10th. And then we run into and Christmas and New Year's. And we're looking at a month off, almost. Yep. Good thing we're doing this all year yeah. round. Yeah, and, that, and right. again, that, that's, that, those are, these were always the issues. But that's why, that's why some, of the, uh, some of the times when we talked about it, we said we moved days around, was doing some of these things. Oh, yeah. You know, so, so we would do a Wednesday 
on one week just to, just to make sure we got a meeting just in. Just to or, get some meetings in. Mm -hmm. If somebody didn't, you know, we had it open, or Thursday, if, if, if uh, 11 of the 20 people had it. So it looks like we're only meeting once in December. Okay. We're unless up to January 7th. Unless, unless we want to try to meet a different day of the week sometime during December. How do people feel about that one? Anything on Thursday? On Thursday? On Thursday? How Thursday is feel? my favorite day of the week of any of them for our meeting. <laughs> That's what I told Elaine, but apparently I got voted down. <laughs> I teach on Thursdays, but I can take one. I can take one off on December. So. Thursday the twentieth. Looks like the December twentieth. Right Does Thursday, December twentieth work I, for people? I can't. I can't meet on Thursdays. Okay. So if I'm not going to be able to make it to a meeting, how much of a heads up should I like? I can't make number twenty-six. So how much do you do I let you know in this meeting itself? Or I can yeah, you, and you can always let. Um, let Elaine know or you know email both of us and that's fine make sure there's enough people who can still be yeah. here too Mary would it be reasonable to um, to have our meeting on the 26th and take public comment and then at that point decide if we need to throw in an extra meeting based on that sounds like a good idea yeah that sounds like a good idea all right okay so on Monday November 26th, we'll be having a public hearing, 7 o'clock. Okay. Yep. We'll solicit ideas from, and of course, you know, talk to your committees, talk to your friends and family, and <laughs> have them read the zoning bylaws. Um, <laughs> and then we will meet again. When was it November December, December 10th. 10th but we'll also decide on a possible additional day during December but at the November 26th meeting and if you cannot be here Mato, mm -hmm. um, on November 26th you know Elaine and I can can talk to you offline about what dates are good for you during December you know just in case we need to schedule another meeting yeah that's the only day in November that I won't be available that okay. weekend I'm go going off and I'm coming back only on Monday night so it's just Okay, so, so December in general is pretty good for you. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Last thing I'll suggest. Yes. Do, do we maybe want to pick one or two items to discuss at the next meeting to maybe get a little background going and a little research going? So that if our public comment doesn't take more than yeah. minutes, we have something to do. So it seems to me that banners were. were um, an item that were should be relatively easy, so we can. <laughs> I know we say that. We say that. <laughs> remember, adding, remember adding the word residential. <laughs> oh. So that could be one item. I think it might be fun to talk about mobile vendors myself. The mobile vendors. Yeah. It's going to be a fun topic. <laughs> and for that one particularly we we're going to look at other communities ask the building inspectors mm -hmm. um, if they could come in and well if, if that's the case then why don't, if I may could we ask the building inspector about the sidewalks too sure the same that's day so idea. that we don't have to call ask them twice building inspectors. is that a building inspector or DPW we can ask them both Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, building inspector, that, that would give, give us the ADA and all that stuff, and the and DPW would tell us what they can build. <laughs> but then again, is it you know is, are we defining the sidewalk to, to Elaine's point for future developments? But because we already have that pretty well defined. Um, uh, not that the developments on the outer skirt, the outskirts of Hopkinton ever get plowed. That's where they plow the snow onto, unlike the downtown people. You lucky stiffs get just sidewalks all plowed. I thought on sidewalks we were going to get clarification as to where the comment was coming from and possibly just address it yeah. through planning oh, that's board true. guidance. Oh, it's a good point. See, two good planning board people here. That's what we need. That 
Excellent. Okay, so banners and mobile vendors and a little bit on sidewalks if the building inspectors are here to give us input. Hey, and we don't know what we don't know what people are going to bring us too. That oh yeah absolutely. <clears throat> we get we could get some juice. But at least you know in, t in terms of what we we can research ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Can you just clarify? Are we all doing our own independent research on these issues? A lot of times, uh, Elaine will <laughs> bring us lots of good material and send it out ahead of time so that we can we can read. Obviously, what you usually do is the existing bylaw, so excerpt that into our packet so we can read that, um, and um, and then other research that you find. But certainly, we're all free to look for other information that we may have access to on the internet or you know just through other other um, sources but we're going to get something as a starting we're point we're going to get something yeah. but if anyone is familiar with a place or a bylaw let us know mm -hmm. uh, george and i will both be working on those so she so, may be at the next meeting i may be we may take turns right. so. So sometimes, oh, last year there were people who said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm aware, or I used to live in this community and so-and-so, you know, the different state who happened to have a dark sky, um, really comprehensive <laughs> um, rule book and, and brought that for us to read, so. But mostly we rely on our experts. <laughs> okay, so. Um, the agenda will be out um, how far ahead of time um, for the it's uh, Monday mm -hmm. then it would be the previous Thursday previous at the latest okay. and Elaine has everyone's email is that right okay. so, okay. that's great also to adjourn yep don't we have to do we approve them we, we did we did, oh, we did already did I vote on it you did? Yes, I you did. Been asleep. Oh, okay. you, were <laughs> you were in favor. I thought we put that aside. Okay. I made the motion. I thought you seconded it. Probably. <laughs> I will entertain a, a motion to adjourn the meeting. So I, I made the motion. Okay. okay. Do we have it? So it's just open for a second. Then. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? <laughs> Any abstentions? Oh, thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.